My name is Sheila Smith from Minnesota Citizens for the Arts, and I have eight minutes to tell a story that took 20 years to happen. So I'm going to just fly right through this. It's basically a story about the power of doing something absolutely crazy. On election night 2008, I was in a small hot room in the basement of the Park Square Theater in St. Paul with about 10 other people. They included people from Conservation Minnesota, the Sierra Club, the National Rifle Association, the Deer Hunters Association, uh, the Grouse Hunters, um, and uh, a couple other arts folks. And upstairs, there was a big crowd of 100 arts people and people from the NRA, the Deer Hunters Association, etc., watching the election on a jumbotron. And uh, they experienced upstairs the historic moment when President Obama was elected as our first black president. And the joy and shock of some of these people uh, was all going on upstairs. And we missed it all, because we were down in the basement watching these uh, computer monitors as the returns came in for the Clean Water, Land, and Legacy Amendment that we had proposed on the ballot uh, that year. And it was going badly. The numbers looked terrible. We had a little TV down there, and on TV, the reporters were telling us, these people lost. They ran a terrible campaign. They, they suck. But we could see from the numbers that something was wrong. And we figured out that the first congressional district, southern Minnesota, was misreporting the returns in such a way to make it look like we were losing when actually we were really winning. So we sent our lawyer and our campaign manager up to the Secretary of State's office to yell at them. And with an hour, within an hour, the numbers flipped, and we won. Um, the crazy collection of people I described represented a coalition of 300 plus nonprofit, civic, conservation, arts, parks, water advocates who worked together to pass the Clean Water, Land, and Legacy Amendment. Um, it passed overwhelmingly uh, by 56% in Minnesota. We got more votes than President Obama. We got, lar we got more votes than anything had ever been voted on in Minnesota in history. Um, and it, that even, it was even better than that, because in Minnesota, if you don't vote on a constitutional amendment, it's an automatic no. So if you discount that, we actually got over 60% of the, of the public. Um, what was the amendment? The amendment raised the state sales tax by three-eighths of one percent and created four new funds. One for land, one for parks, one for uh, water, and one for arts. Uh, the, con the sportsmen were there because they wanted to preserve land so that there would be land for animals to live so they could shoot them. <laughs> the environmentalists were there because they wanted to protect the land and water so that the animals and people could live and we would not shoot them. Um, the parks people were there because money was low for maintaining our parks and parks in Minnesota are one of our greatest quality of life factors and they were there because they needed resources and the arts were there. Uh, because we believed that the arts uh, were vitally important to Minnesota's quality of life as well. Um, this has resulted in uh, a new arts and culture fund, one of the four, I'm only going to talk about one of the four, uh, that now raises $104 million annually, uh, biannually um, to uh, invest in the state's nonprofit arts and culture. The language of the constitutional amendment says it has to be spent on art, arts access, arts education, and the preservation of our history and cultural heritage. People often forget that the first word is art, and this was about art, this fund, and right now we're duking it out at the legislature over where this money will be spent. Uh, there's a lot of legislators uh, coming up with lots of creative ideas that they think are cultural, like uh, rehabbing a historic bridge with our money, but it's about art, so we're duking it out right as we speak. So. The organization that I work for, Minnesota Citizens for the Arts, is a statewide arts advocacy organization. We're a 501c4 political action organization, not a C3 arts organization. We don't function like an arts organization. We are pro uh, political professionals. Our job is politics. That's what we do. And that's often confused uh, by folks. I am one with the arts community, but I am also invested in the political community. So it's kind of a, a unique spot to be in. Um, our board is 36 members of the Minnesota arts community statewide. We're a statewide organization. And one of the things I thought while I was sitting, uh, thinking this morning, what I would say is that cities are silos, you guys. <laughs> cities are silos. I work on a statewide basis, and every place I go, every town, every city, thinks they are unique in their own little island, and everybody else is the other. And when you get over that, you discover that there are people and resources that can help you everywhere. 
So remember that cities are silos. I have eight minutes, and okay, lesson learned. Um, I'm a big fan of science, and so I listen to Science Friday. I read a lot of scientific articles, and one of the things that was really interesting to me to learn was that when you have a group of scientists who are working on a particular scientific problem, if you have members of that team all be of one type, like all physicists, you're much less likely to find innovation and creativity than if your team is made up of a physicist, a biologist, et cetera, et cetera. That you really need diversity of thought on the team in order to succeed and create innovation. And I think that's something that our campaign taught us, was when you put the NRA and the arts together uh, with all those other folks, um, we were much strengthened politically by the fact that we were each bringing a different sector of society to the table to help us pass that amendment. Um, okay, now I have two minutes. Strengths of each. Okay, here's a lesson I learned from the environmental community. They have a national system for helping local people do uh, initiative and referendum. They have polling resources, they have training resources, um, and that was one of the most important things that the environmental community brought to the table was this national perspective and national resources where people in different cities are all fighting the same battles and they all think they're alone, but they have taken on a task of figuring out what are the tools that each of them could use and then providing to them those tools when the local people wanted to do a referendum. The arts have nothing like that. Those people who have proposed uh, initiative and referendum for, uh, uh, to benefit the arts, 90% of those pass. 90%. And the polling that we got showed that there wasn't a heck of a lot of difference between support for environmental issues and arts issues. And in fact, those people are the same people, that the people we were trying to reach were not whether or not you were a hunter or an artist. The people we were trying to reach were the people that got out of their barker loungers and did stuff. Those were the voters we were looking for. The voters we didn't care about were the ones who sat in their barca lounges and never left their house because they also don't vote. The environmentalists and the artists are also the voters. Okay, I'm very close to the end here. So finding common ground was one of the things I was supposed to talk about. So how do we find common ground in this crazy coalition? It had to do with values. The sitting at the same table and talking over how are we gonna work together? How are we gonna pass this? What do we have in common? The thing we had in common was that we all believed that the most important things about Minnesota were our quality of life our access to the great outdoors, the arts, artists people want to go outdoors, the outdoors are beautiful, let's paint it. Uh, I like the outdoors, I'm out there all the time. Um, and, the, and it turned out that the environmentalists were great participators in arts and uh, cultural activities. But what we, even the hunters, what we all believed was that these things were pivotal to our quality of life and by working together we could help sustain them and that's what we did, the end.